On February 16, the Idaho House of Representatives passed House Bill 117, an act relating to state sovereignty and health and safety. The bill passed the House on a vote of 49-4, 20 against, and one excused absence. It now rests in the Senate State Affairs Committee where it awaits a public hearing to be held Friday, February 25th at 8 a.m. The bill was written in response to federal public law 111-148, also known as the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, passed by Congress in March of 2010. Many questions are now being raised as to the actual number of new bureaucrats who will be required and the cost to implement. The bill included nearly 2,000 pages with many federal mandates and creates over 150 new government agencies, each of which has to be staffed, each of which has to be housed, each of which has to be funded, and each of which will require new promulgation of rules and regulations. The exact cost to the public, unknown. With me today is Senator Monty Pierce, who will be the Senate floor sponsor of House Bill 117. Welcome, Monty. Thank you, Elizabeth. Why do we need this bill? Well, we need it because the bill we commonly refer to as the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, is the worst bill that's ever been passed in American history, in my opinion. With 15 to 16,000 new IRS agents, with it costing the state of Idaho next year $228 million to implement it, uh, for, the, for the Medicare. Uh, taxing, if you have a good health care plan now, you're going to pay taxes for having it, whether it's furnished to you or, or whether you buy it yourself. Uh, California the Blues just raised their premiums 59% because of Obamacare. Um, this is an anti-economic development bill. Small businesses are afraid to hire because they don't know they can afford um, the cost of Obamacare. Uh, we had a, the largest employer in my district, District 9, came and testified in the last hearing and, in, and indicated that if they joined and, and, and paid the cost that they're supposed to pay, it will cost them a million three hundred and, I can't do the exact number, but around three hundred twenty thousand, three hundred twenty million, a million three hundred twenty thousand dollars. And if they opt out and say, okay, we're going to opt out, we'll just pay the penalty, nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Wow. You know, that's a burden on business that, uh, people all across the nation are frightened by it and they're sitting waiting for us to do something um, and here we are in a recession that business drives the economy and we're and we're choking it back yeah and so when you look at it we've had a, a federal judge back in Florida that ruled that it's unconstitutional there's another judge also ruled it unconstitutional but two other judges said it is constitutional so there's actually been four judges on it this will end up in the Supreme Court eventually. It should have already been filed in the appeals court, but the Obama administration is not filed yet. They're stalling time. They just mailed out two weeks ago 6,000 pages of rules and regulations to businesses and, and citizens beginning to, to begin the implementation of Obamacare. They intend to implement this before they ever get to court. And this is the only step we have to keep it out of Idaho. And so what we simply do is we're interposing ourselves between the federal government and overreaching federal government and the citizen state of Idaho and says it will not be implemented here. We will not start down that road. And, and our 10th Amendment allows for this. There's a provision in the 10th Amendment that says that the rights are reserved by the states and, or to the people. That's right. If we have a problem with anything that the federal government is doing that we feel is harmful to us. Now, there have been arguments that those of you who support nullification or interposition, um, the right to tell the feds, no, this is not, makes sense for us, we're not going to follow, that if you, if you support that, you are not upholding your oath of office to the Constitution, and yet that's in the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution. Well, that argument is kind of a silly argument, and a silly from the standpoint that, uh, how about the people that passed it? Mm -hmm. Being it's been declared unconstitutional, I think they're the ones that aren't keeping their oath of office. They so. didn't even read it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The most uh, the, the unread bill. But I think that the real question we have to face is: Is the federal government the exclusive is exclusive judge of its own power? Right. Is it? I but don't we don't think need so. state. It, it, if if the only ones that can really write bills that are unchallengeable, that are just it, 
then we don't even need state legislatures That's because great. everything that the feds do will be law. And in fact, the reality is when we really start looking, they have, they have uh, overpowered the state so much now. We have very little that we're in charge of now. It's, it, you know, if, if this pattern continues, we just shut the state capitals and government down and, and send everything back to D.C. And you we know, got, as rapidly as getting worse back there, that we're headed for a total wreck then. Yeah. Well, we've gone from having one tyrant to having 535 tyrants that can rule over us, and that's not what our government was set up for. Well, you know, I think that as we look at it, we, we ask, how do we stop this overreaching usurpation of, of power? And I think back over, you remember there was the Fugitive Slave Act. Mm -hmm. And I think that that, um, that shows us a pattern. Uh, there's several patterns. This is nothing new. Uh, Wisconsin was taken to the Supreme Court because they would not abide by the federal law that they had to return slaves that had escaped out of the South and, and came North. Uh, they were taken to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court ruled and said, you have to return the slaves. Wisconsin said, it's morally wrong. And they didn't have to do it. Today, we have done all we can to get abortion out of Idaho. This brings it back. Mm -hmm. We have done all we can to keep death panels out of our old people. This brings that back. Those are moral issues that we stand on, as Wisconsin stood on, and the federal government backed down. And when people say that you can't legislate morality, we do that all the time. We have laws against murder. We have laws against rape. We have laws against stealing. Right. And those are all moral laws. It is, and we, we, can, uh, we have plenty of modern examples of, of people and states and places. You know, California today has a, a, the, you know, the, the, they're using medical marijuana down there. Uh, that's against federal code. And there's not a succession happening. There's not a revolution. Mm -hmm. They've been doing it for a number of years now. Montana's in that same. In fact, Montana's tightening their rules down a little bit. And they're still opposing federal code. Now and that isn't the end of the world. We do want to encourage people that Friday, February 25th at 8 a.m. will be the public hearing to, so that the public can give input and testimony on this bill. It would be wise to come early to sign up if you want to testify. You can also submit written testimony. You can even do both. You can present your um, case uh, verbally and also hand out written. Um, we would suggest, however, that they probably limit their comments to two to three minutes. I imagine they're going to put some kind of limit on it. You know, people who came last time said that it was the most uh, encouraging thing they'd been to in a long time. They said to hear that testimony from real Idahoans and real Americans um, was just a real uplifting experience. And so we hope that people will come down and support us in this because I think the numbers will show what the public support is for this and their concern about the Obamacare. Well, in a time of, of recession, we certainly can't shut down our businesses. Those businesses hire people, and those people have then got an income to be able to feed and clothe their families. Absolutely. So, we're exactly an economy is built on jobs, and this keeps jobs from happening. Thank so, you, Monty. Thank you.